Hi, it's Ryzen 9 CPU overheating time again. Uh, you've seen the previous videos uh, where I've had, after many years of perfectly fine operation, my Ryzen 9 CPU started giving over temperature warning messages. And anyway, I've done a few videos um, solving this. And the last thing I did was to uh, reset, so I repasted the CPU, of course, and that gave a drastic reduction in the uh, temperature. And then uh, the other thing I did um, is reflash the BIOS, which reset, I updated the BIOS and it reset all the settings. And now I'm actually getting uh, EDC and uh, TDC readings, which seem to be, you know, like actually correct. And the uh, CPU speed varies and everything seems to be working fine now. But still, on one occasion, I have had the machine reboot again. But it was after, like, while I was handbrake transcoding. But it ha only happened after, like, 20, 30 minutes or something like that. So it takes a lot longer. Anyway, for the last 10 minutes, I've been stressing this uh, CPU and you can see I've been using um, uh, CPU Z up here just to like do the uh, CPU stress test. And as you can see, it's running at the full 4.2 uh, gig there, and it's getting to you know 81.6 degrees. So you know, so it's the limit's 90, but that's getting uncomfortably high. I still don't know if it's uh, like a could be a, like a power supply issue. The power supply could be aging, but you know, I just want to solve the uh, thermal problems before uh, potentially looking into anything to do with the uh, power supply. So that could still be a thing. So it's, you know, I haven't made it fail now. As you can see, the CPU is absolutely maxed out at 100% here. So this is the, uh, what is it? The Ryzen 9, um, for those playing along at home, Ryzen 9 5900X uh, 12 core processor. So it's a bit of a beast of a uh, uh, CPU, and I'll show you the cooler that I've got, because now, in this video, I'm going to upgrade the cooler. I am now transcoding using Handbrake here, transcoding a 4K video uh, using H265 um, on, well, X265, and uh, the CPU does actually, um, uh, it seems to be fairly, anyway, it does jump around. Um, some people, uh, like my previous, my original uh, bias settings had it like maxed at 4.2 all the time. And yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't get as hot doing this because you can see that the CPU loading is not 100% anymore. But if I do uh, uh, transcode two videos at the same time, then that'll go up near 100%. So anyway, as you see, it got to like 81 degrees. And these temperatures are all with the side covers on my machine. And as you'll see in my machine now, it's uh, the airflow is uh, the air arrangement is yeah, a bit how you're doing. So here's the inside of the case here, and you can see that uh, this old Cooler Master, I can't, was it a 412 or something? I don't know, don't go, I probably got that wrong. But uh, you can see it's obviously in the wrong orientation, but this was all I had at the time. I just reused this thing. I've got a, a uh, Noctua um, fan in here, but as you can see, I've got my uh, GTX GeForce RTX uh, 2060 graphics card here, and the air vents are along the front here. So the optimal airflow would be to suck the air in from here and have the air axial in that direction um, instead of like taking it from here. So if the GPU is doing any uh, grunty work, obviously that's giving off extra heat and that can actually um, increase the uh, CPU temperature ultimately. So yeah, I do want to suck the airflow in here and have that axial flow like that and then going out uh, the back here. So that's the idea. That's why I've got a new cooler. I got it super duper on special and uh, it's going to have an axial flow in that direction and it's bigger and more better. Oh, look at this bad boy. High-end Dark Rock Pro TR4. No compromise, silence, and performance. Only for Ryzen Threadripper. Be quiet. Uh, 250 watts um, total uh, power dissipation. And uh, d yeah, apparently this is one of the duck's guts. Ones, although a lot of people go, no, oh, no, look, two is the best. Oh, this brand's the best. Oh, no, this shit. Oh, yeah, go on. Go in the comments down below. Have a wank. Um, and look at this. Look at this. I got the super wanky thermal compound. Well, apparently it's not the Duck's Guts super wanky thermal compound, but it is some sort of Arctic bloody nano um, uh, graphene, I don't know, bloody MX4 stuff or whatever. Anyway, 
that was super cheap as well but I got this uh, super cheap and apparently um, this is designed for the different orientation because I couldn't um, change the orientation of that original uh, one that I just had uh, lying around that Cooler Master one that's why I stuck it in there so apparently this will have it's got dual heat sinks on it um, and it looks like it's got dual fans does it anyway oh, let's open it up so I'm going super super wanky here and we have a super duper instruction manual oh we've got tools oh we might even get some paste oh yeah no what what paste uh, just just yep yeah, unbranded paste there you go should i use the unbranded paste or should i use the arctic nano wankery paste i'm going to use the arctic nano wankery paste of course i am yeah a lot of people still won't be happy oh there you go there's all the clips oh, do this oh 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 yeah oh yeah Oh, is that our second fan? Second fan is not... Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, we even get a long screwdriver. Oh, that's nice. There you go. I got a bonus long... Yeah, apparently this thing is really nice. You can, like, get through here and, like, it's easy to screw in. So they've thought about that from the design aspect. So that's really nice. So be quiet, fan. Apparently this thing is practically silent. You can't hear it. It's, like, 24 dB or something. I don't know. Something like that. Please peel off label before using it, <laughs> you think? Warning, Will Robinson. Um, okay, so I do have an extra fan in there. It's got uh, two, four, six, seven pipes on each side. So it's dual heat sink. So these are copper pipes, black anodized uh, copper, apparently. And whoa, look at that wankery. Oh, 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 oh. People are soiling their pants right now in the comments. So apparently we've got two fans. And uh, my motherboard does support two CPU fans. But, oh, yeah, look at the... Look at that. Whoa, look at the knobbly bits on the uh, on the fan. That makes it super duper silent. Um, there you go. Made in China, of course. So I probably want both fans, don't I? I assume it goes in that way to match that one. Otherwise, they'd be uh, competing against each other. And that's probably no good. So how does that... How do we mount that in there? Um, I'm going to have to RTFM and get back to you. That's interesting. Look, they actually curved the heatsink in like that. It's got a dip. That must be to do with, like, noise, airflow, and the scalloped edges on there. That'd all be for uh, airflow, like, noise reasons as well, wouldn't it? I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below. But, uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot of wankery that's gone into the design of this. Um, good or bad. It's, uh, it's, it's still all wankery, though. Wankery can be good. Oh, apparently one's a 135mm fan and one's a 120mm fan. There you go. So the inside... Yeah, look. The inside one is bigger than the outside one. Ha <laughs> ha, that's what she said. Aha, uh -huh, this fan is held on with clips. Uh, sorry if you're, like... <laughs> it's all black. Maybe I should, like, set the uh, exposure on this and yeah, you might be able to see it a bit better but so yeah i suspect that's what these are for people stop eating your thermal paste don't do it but if you do drink lots of water and urgently seek medical attention i get that like that and it doesn't like how does that clip in it's once again it's too long aha they give you two different uh size clips there you go i, I don't know what the other ones are for a different type of fan maybe Eh. No, I got that in wrong. This cable has to be coming out the because the thing, the connector's over here somewhere. So, oops. Nice attention to detail. They've actually got rubber strips in there which isolate the fan from the metal. So, rubber baby buggy bumpers for the win. Very nice. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. So, let's get that clip in there. So, that clip in there and that clip in there. And then we should be able to then snap this over the top yep of the casing like that and it's isolated with the rubber strip ah nice beautiful thing of beauty it's joy forever second clip there you go oh oh that's tight as right so we've got our dual fans 120 millimeter 135 millimeter and this goes in this direction like this and then it's got the two slits there so that'll have the bracket in there, which will... So that is the correct orientation. Hope it's the right height um, <laughs> to fit in my case. Well, we'll find out. So there's the instructions. I install some spacers and then these bars over the top. Uh, then I put thermal paste on for a nice complete coverage. None of that pee rubbish. Come on, seriously? I just pasted this bad boy and <laughs> now I've got a... 
<laughs> just take it out. Well, you know, ah, that's what you get when you reuse these things. That's that Ryzen 9 bad boy. That's all wiped off and uh, ready. Oh, I've got some on my hands, damn it. Blah. Anyway, it's ready to go. Okay, so I've got this MX4 Arctic Wankery paste and uh, yeah, I'm going to put that on there. None of that pee rubbish. I'm going to uh, give it. A, I'm going to do a total coverage on there just to trigger everyone in the comments. I should have put up one end, shouldn't I? <laughs> that was if I'm going to spread it all the way like that. And also, this is the manufacturer recommended technique, the complete coverage here. I do believe that's going to be good enough for Australia. No worries. You can see my old uh, Cooler Master wasn't actually machined completely flat. Those copper bars are sort of like in there, whereas this bad boy here, let's peel that off. There you go. One solid machined surface. So that's going to be really schmick um, for that thermal paste so it doesn't get caught in any grooves or anything like that. It's another reason you probably shouldn't do the P method if you've got something like this because you can't guarantee it's going to spread properly. So anyway, um, yeah, like you can see the difference in the... <laughs> <laughs> significant difference in those heat sinks there. Just one of these is bigger, badder, and better, betterer than my existing one. But now I've got two of them. So yeah, let's install this thing. So I'll take out my old clips here because they were only appropriate for that cooler master. Oh, it's magnetic. Damn it. I think that's a rookie mistake. Um, yeah, there was a bracket on the back of my motherboard. So I'm going to have to yeah, um, I should have just done one at a time there. Oopsie. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, take the other back side. I don't have to take the motherboard out. Just the other side of this panel comes out. So there we go. And now I can get in there and install these uh, standoffs. So i got to use three hands here. No worries. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. These brackets don't fit. They're not the right size. I got two different length ones. Not only did they supply two different lengths, but neither of them match up with the spacing. What? What? I thought these sort of things were standardized. This is designed for Ryzen 9 um, CPUs. Maybe my motherboard, my socket's different. Oh, unbelievable. Bloody Murphy. And of course, my existing clip that I've got for the old Cooler Master heatsink is not the correct width to go in the slots here. Unbelievable. I'm done. That's it. Like, I, I don't can't see a way I can install this. Oh, God. Anyway, I got this cheap. Might be able to flip it for a profit. Yeah, well, it turns out I'm an idiot. Duh, everyone's screaming. This is a TR4, and my process is obviously an AM4. Like, obviously. So they're incompatible. This is only for the older Threadripper uh, processors, apparently. Not for the new ones of the AM4 socket. So I need an AM4 version of this. Jeez. Oh, well, after that complete embarrassment, turns out it wasn't a total loss. Not only did I get to repaste my uh, CPU again with the Arctic Nano Graphene Wankery, whoa, you know, um, I got to repaste it with that, but I also uh, managed to rearrange the fan. So to the other side, it was on this side, um, taking the heat this way and pushing it up and out. But now I've put it on the top side, and so it's taking the cooler air from the top here, hopefully, and taking the cooler air, even though, even though hot air rises from the CPU, um, taking the cooler air from the top and blowing it down onto, yes, onto the GPU. I don't give a toss about my GPU. I rarely use my, like, GPU anyway. I don't, I'm not a gamer, kitty. So yeah, let's have a look at the difference it makes. You might be surprised. Check this out. This is really interesting. I am maxing out both my CPU and my GPU. So th there you go. The GPU is at 100%. I'm doing a uh, video encode using Handbrake, uh, which is uh, using the NV Ink. Think, whoa. That's, oh, I just cleared the bloody screen thing. So not only is my GPU being maxed, although it says 73% utilization here, I don't know why it was 100% and it's just dropped back. I don't understand that anyway it's maybe it's got to a different part of the encoding i'm not uh oh no 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 it's back up to 100 there you go yeah not sure what the deal is there anyway i'm maxing out 
my uh, GPU and I'm maxing out my CPU uh, as well, 100% using the uh, stress test uh, thing here. So I can give you that. That's G uh, CPU is at 100% and look at my temps. Look at them. Look at them. Bobby Dazzler. Oh, we're talking uh, 71 degrees here. 71.7 and I haven't really seen it go over that so it seems to be stabilizing so I've dropped a good 10 degrees by just doing those things re I don't know I don't think the repasting makes any difference uh, but simply moving the uh, fan um, to extract the air from the top of the case down towards the GPU even though I know yet yeah, no I cannot rotate that heatsink okay it's just it's just not physically possible to rotate it but this is fine like I've dropped almost 10 degrees there, nine or 10 degrees just by doing that. So there you go. And I wasn't stressing out the um, uh, GPU before. Now I'm 100% GPU in and I'm 70, 72 degrees. No worries. So that was actually, I was not gonna release this video, but now it turns out that I rearranged the fan. This is actually a useful um, upgrade. Really, even though I didn't change my heatsink at all and that was complete furphy, yeah, TR4, AM4, whatever. I don't know. Anyone want to buy a uh, slightly used <laughs> TR4 <laughs> badass um, heatsink? Anyway, point and laugh at uh, dumbass Dave down below. Catch you next time.